Hello book reading friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Mel and today I bring you an updated bookshelf tour where I show you every single book I own from rare editions, special editions, book box editions, paperbacks, hardcovers, all around the board with genres too. There is literally everything in this shelf. So I'm sure you guys are about to have a great time perusing my shelves and seeing exactly what I own. Now this is hands down my most requested video. My shelves have obviously changed in the course of the past few months. Now I did do a bookshelf tour at the beginning of the year so I will be leaving that linked down below in case you guys want to check that out first before you check this one out. There are books in that video that are not showcased anymore on my shelves mostly because I needed the space and those are books that I read a long time ago and I want to keep newer titles displayed so that I can reach for them easily when I build my TBR and I don't forget that I own them. So books that I have already read and loved or that I read a long time ago I did take those out of the shelf and they are currently sitting on my closet so those books are not going to be showcased in this video but they were showcased in my first bookshelf tour at the beginning of the year. Obviously the newest addition to the collection is this skinny bookshelf right here. I do have Billy bookshelves. I have them in white. I have three of them. So I have two of the bigger ones and then I have this skinny one. And at the moment I believe I have over 300 books. You will see it in the title in the description but I do believe we have far surpassed the 100 book mark. Between the last video and this video and the books that I still own I believe we're well past that number. Last time around it was 200 books and clearly because of the newest edition the stacks of books and the way that I am organizing books now there is a lot more here than there was last time and this video wouldn't be possible without Ana Luisa who is the sponsor of today's video so I do need to give a big thank you to them for making this video happen now you guys know from my videos I love jewelry especially gold jewelry I am constantly wearing them constantly wearing several earrings at the same time several necklaces at the same time jeweling up my fingers with rings I just love dressing down so that I can dress it up with jewelry. I have a very just like minimalist casual style with what I wear. I'm constantly wearing turtlenecks and t-shirts and so the jewelry part of it makes it a little bit more dressed up while still retaining that casual element to it which you guys know I love. So partnering with Ana Luisa is absolutely perfect because every single piece that you see me wearing jewelry wise is from Ana Luisa in all of my videos. What I love about them is that they have quality luxury pieces without having those luxury markups. So there are pieces on their website that start as little as $39. They are crafted with care with the best noble materials, meaning that they will be long lasting, they won't rust up. Obviously you do need to take care of them as you would other jewelry pieces. And what I really love about Ana Luisa is their approach at sustainable fashion, which as you guys know, it's such a big topic at hand nowadays. They have managed to offset 100% of carbon emissions, starting with how they source their raw materials all the way to the disposal of their pieces. And as always, they were super kind and they sent my way through three new pieces. Now I love perusing their site and seeing exactly what they have, what new additions they have on their website and just seeing the prices honestly because it's not as scary as some other luxury brands which I really really love. And so the newest in my collection are the earrings that I'm currently wearing. Now this time around I decided to go for some smaller hoops. I thought it would be really nice to have a smaller pair. So this is the sparkle style which does have a little bit of a gemstone moment around the hoop and then it also has a little chain which I thought was extra nice because because it makes the ear look a little bit more dressed up. Alongside that, you guys know that I love myself a good cuff piece for my ear. This is the Antoinette style. I absolutely love this. It definitely looks like a super expensive piece and it's not. And then last but not least, I also have one of their newest necklaces and this is Noel. It is a hand and this was designed by Noel Gallagher, who is a fellow booktuber. So if you do feel like treating yourself to a little something and start building your jewelry collection, I will have my link at the top Top of the description so you can browse their website and see all that they have to offer they currently have a summer sale going on so the entire website is 20% off no coupon needed you just click the link it'll take you directly to their website and you can go ham with getting yourself exactly what you want or need so again thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video and without further ado let's get right into this updated bookshelf tour Okay, so first off, we've got the middle grade shelf. And as you can see, most of these books are by Rick Riordan. Like this whole section right here is dedicated to him and his books. And we also have obviously a bunch of other middle grades, including the Pages and Co series. First off, we are starting with some books that I have yet to read. We've got Front Desk, which I love the cover for, Willa of the Wood, The Adventurer's Guild, Nevermore, Trials of Morgan Crow, and then Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. Then we've got Putkin and Stubbs, 
Lost Heart, Furthermore, and The Mystery of Black Hollow, which I have already read and I believe I gave it three stars by the time that I finished reading. Then we've obviously got the three Pages & Co books that are published for the sake of not disassembling this too much. I won't be showing you book one and two because I have already shown them in plenty of videos. This is the Waterstones exclusive edition signed by the author. So if we do flip through this book, we've got beautiful end papers. It is signed by the author and then it's also got this stunning design on the hardcover that I really love. And after the magic and changing your stars, we have got Magnus Chase, the gods of Asgard, the Sword of Summer, the Hammer of Thor, and the Ship of the Dead. And then the Heroes of Olympus series is The Last Hero, The Son of Neptune, The Mark of Athena, and House of Hades as the fourth book. And this is the continuation of Percy Jackson. And then we of course also have The Blood of Olympus, which is the fifth and final book. In this one, we obviously have my Percy Jackson shelf, and this is honestly one of my most prized possessions. I was able to get all of the hardcovers used in super great condition so that I could slap on these custom dust jackets by Nerdy Ink, and then I have my giant Camp Half-Blood bookmark also by Nerdy Ink, and I've also got some trinkets in here, so I've got this little plant, as well as this candle by Novel Wix, which I just love her candles so much. I will leave it linked down below in case you guys want to check them out, and I also have Witches Steeped in Gold by Cyan and smart. This is the fairy loot edition, which I recently unboxed. You will see that in the next video that I will be putting up. And I just love this edition so much. Boiling on the dust jacket. You've also got the art under the dust jacket. You've got the beautiful sprayed edges. This is just a stunning edition of a book. Like I literally cannot get over this. And this is Curse of the Spectre Queen. This was recently sent to me by Disney Books as well. And we've got two middle grades in here as well. We have got the last Shadow Warrior by Sam Subi, which was a book from Alan Crates Jr., as well as this one. This is Strange Worlds Travel Agency by L.D. Lipinski. This was also an Alan Crate book. And it's time to show you these beauties. So I will show them to you one by one because they deserve their own moment. First off, we obviously have Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse. We have The Battle of the Labyrinth, which is the fourth book. And then last but not least, arguably one of my favorite covers, this is the last Olympian and these editions are just, oh, they're everything. This right here is mostly like a fantasy black, white, red, kind of Kareem-esque area except for the last few books on that end of the shelf. We first have got the Funko Pop from Poppy that I recently unboxed here on my channel and that is sitting right here in company of the From Blood and Ash books. I love the cover for the second and the third one. This is obviously Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I really love this cover. I think they did a stunning a job with it. And then obviously the one that I have yet to read but I have been itching to pick up is The Crown of Gilded Bones. I have yet to read this book for everybody asking me. I also have Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I've got The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern which I have yet to read but this is a stunning copy. Another one that I really want to read sometime soon is The Handmaid's Tale. This is a cover that's like super simple but for some reason I really freaking love it. I also have V.E. Schwab books right here all the way from Vicious to the Darker Shade of Magic series which which I am not a massive fan of the Shades of Magic series, but I personally love Vicious. This month I'm reading Vengeful and I'm super excited. Into the Drowning Deep is one that I read recently and I've really loved. And then we've got, oh my god, I love the cover for these. These are Fewer Born by Claire Legrand and then Kingsbane, which is the second book. I love the cover for Kingsbane so much. Like, it's honestly unreal. These covers, like, they did such a great job with them as well. Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I recently read the first one. This is the entirety of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy and the first book, I really liked despite it being like older YA. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. And then right there at the corner, I have The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss and Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, which I have not read either of those books, but they're there. And right here, we have what I like to call my black and white shelf, even though it's not entirely black and white, but the majority of the books trickle from black all the way to white over here. And then I have got this little corner right here here, which is a little bit more colorful, I guess. And I also got some trinkets here on the top. I have really learned to love decorating my shelves recently, and I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I am currently struggling with wanting to keep the decor, but also needing more space and needing this amount right here and whatever I have in other shelves. But I really don't want to take these off because I love them. So let me show you the trinkets first. So for the trinkets, we first have this bin right here, which came in an owl crate. This was, I believe, the May owl crate, and this says, Logic 
ends where love begins. We've also got this Empire State Building from New York that I got the first time that I went in 2011. We've also got a candle that is almost, I mean, it is entirely burnt out, but I keep it there for decor purposes. And then I have got this little cute mason jar that came in an Illumicrate. This is inspired on the beautiful, and this just holds all of my, well, not right now, but it typically holds all of my mild liners. I just took off whatever I was using because I'm currently annotating a book, but it usually holds all of those. These are the vanishing half. We've got the first two books in the Stocking Jack the Ripper series by Carrie Maniscalco, and then I have the Guinevere Deception, which I have yet to read. Then we have Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, which as you guys know, I loved this book when it came out, and I can't wait for the sequel to come out this year. It is one of my most anticipated releases, so I can't wait for that. We have got the two books in the Tommy Adayami series, Children of Blood and Bone, which I thought was a duology, but it is indeed a series, and I love the covers for these. These are literally stunning, the both of them. And then we've got the Year of the Witching in Blackstone, which you guys have already seen. We have got the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, Wings of Ebony, A Dark and Hollow Star, In the Dream House. We obviously have the Poppy War Trilogy, which you guys know. This is one of my favorite series of all time. If there is anything that I am grateful for BookTube having introduced me to, it is this series. This is absolutely loved and tabbed. I just had a fantastic time with these books. The third one is not tabbed because I read it as an arc. And then I have Lightbringer by Claire Legrand, which I already showed you guys, Fury Born and Kingsbane. And we obviously have Lore by Alexandra Bracken. We have my blue shelf with literally one of my most prized possessions. But before we get into this one, which I mean, you guys can already see it. First off, we've got Vicious Spirits and Amari and the Night Brothers, two of my favorite books that I have read this year. I love Vicious Spirit and Wicked Fox as well. If you have yet to read those books, I highly recommend them. Like honestly, one of my favorite duology series that I've read this year. We have got Tokyo Ever After by Emiko Jean, which I also cannot wait to read. And then on the other side, you'll notice that a lot of these books are unread, but I have shown them before on my channel. It is The Cost of Knowing and Heartbreakers and Fakers by Cameron Lund. And finally, as part of my collection, we've got Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, which you guys know that was the last book that I needed to complete my Truly Devious collection because I love that series. If you're looking for a good YA thriller, I would highly recommend Truly Devious. And then we've got the stunning first hardcover UK edition of Strange the Dreamer. If you guys don't know, this edition is super hard to find. It went out of print. It only had a few printings. I think this copy in particular was printing number three, but I did manage to get this for super, super cheap in the used section on Amazon, which I am thoroughly thankful for because this is one of my favorite books. You guys know, love this. It's tabbed. It's definitely reread quality with this one. I love it. And then we've got some more books behind that because you can never have too much space. Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden. Thomas. I have also got the House in the Cerulean Sea. I have the U.S. hardback edition of Muse of Nightmares, which is the edition that I did read and annotate. And then back there is the plot. And this shelf right here is mostly fantasy slash sci-fi, but as you can see, I arrange most of my books by height so that they match. And if they don't necessarily match, I'll just stack them together like the Diviners over here. Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. This is a series that I have yet to start. I did watch the show back in the day and I never finished it, but I'm really interested to see how this is going to go down. And this was definitely influenced by me reading and loving A Discovery of Witches and then thinking that I'm going to enjoy this too. And then I have To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, These Violent Delights, which you guys know is one of my favorite books. I also have these three beauties right here. This is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, another one of my favorite books. I have got Lovisona by Romina Garber, which I have yet to read. This stunning edition of The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is a stunning hardcover edition of the this book. I did manage to get this also for super cheap on the used section on Amazon. I believe these are out of print and have been for a while. I don't quite know if this was like an exclusive to a UK bookstore, but I do know that this was an exclusive print for the UK. Obviously, this is what the spine looks like, and this is the back of the book. And the most beautiful thing are these gorgeous stenciled edges that have got the key, the B, and then a sword, which are obviously relevant to the story. Look at those ends. 
pinned papers. This edition did the most and then it is also signed by Erin Morgenstern, which is de it's dedicated to an Ashley. So Ashley, you're watching this, which I don't believe you are, but thank you for selling your copy so that I could buy it because it's signed and that's pretty cool. And then we have got three YA books. We've got the first two books in the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. Read, loved, annotated, all of it. You're gonna see it wash out a little bit, but both of these I thoroughly enjoyed. And then this is a recent hauled book and this is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. This is the All Souls trilogy by Deborah Harkness. And this is obviously a discovery of witches. These dust jackets I bought from, oh my God, I already forgot. I will link them down below because I already forgot the name of the website. I'm thinking of Nerdy Ink and that is not it. But the pretty thing about these covers honestly is the spines obviously because they line up like this. But the cover itself, it's like super simple. It says a discovery of witches. And then if you can see right here, it says Ashmole 782, which is obviously relevant to the story too. But the cover itself is super simple. And then over on this corner, I do have some bookish items. These are all from Illumicrate. We have got the tin can from City of Brass that was recently in one of their boxes. And then we have got the Illumi key for the Mbot, which is obviously of Skyward. And then we've got the Dark Artifices mug. And then I have my little raccoon, Mr. Matthew Evans, if you don't know his name. This was gifted to me by one of my patrons and I really love it a lot. So I just keep the little guy right here displayed on the bookshelf. I have gotten a lot of questions as to where I got my paperback edition of The Diviners. And I got this actually when it came out. This book has been sitting on my bookshelves for a minute. Hence why the pages are like super rusty and like old. You can actually see it right here. This is obviously the bookstore and I bought it in 2013. So it's been sitting there for eight years. And then the hardcover of Lair of Dreams is also the OG cover that I did find on thrift books for like super, super cheap. We have got one of my favorite shelves and I just like the decor in here. The fact that this is stacked up. I love the way that this looks in videos. I'm going to be honest. And so I rarely change this shelf up because I really like the continuity of it. We have got mostly fantasy in this shelf, but we also have like a few contemporaries in here. I have got The Beautiful and The Damned, both by Renee Adier. This is the Beautiful series. And then I have got Middle Game by Shannon McGuire that I really want to read soon. Part of me is telling me that I need to read it in October, but part of me is also like, no, I'll pick it up right now, but it's a long book. Then I have The Black Kids, which is steeped in gold. This is the Owl Crate edition, I believe. The Owl Crate edition, what they did is that instead of making it green, they made it mostly like black and gold. And then I do have a very large expansive sea by Tahara Mafi. We also have War Cross by Mary Lou, Once Upon a Quinceañera, and then American Royals. Then I obviously have the Curse Breaker series by Bridget Kemmerer, which is A Curse of Dark and Lonely, A Hearts of Fierce and Broken, and A Vow So Bold and Deadly. And in here, I also have this little pin that came in the Illumicrate with In the Ravenous Dark. Alongside this Bone Witch necklace that also came, I don't know if in the same box or in one of the boxes for sure, but I don't remember which one. I have my Jack Skellington mug, which a lot of you guys asked me about. I bought this a long time ago in one of the Disney stores. I, let me double check. This was in Disneyland Paris. So I bought this in 2015. And in here I house all of like my book depository slash book of the month bookmarks. And I just separate them obviously. So I've got this little book tin from Illumicrate, which is the book of the dead. This is the one that came with the In the Ravener's Dark box. Freaking stunning. Like I really just want to have a little library of these and just line them up. I think it'd be really pretty. And in here I house all of my tassel bookmarks, which I have been really in love with lately, as well as bookmarks that I have just bought that I reach for frequently, as well as my wooden bookmarks. And then on this side, which I won't really touch these books because these books are packed on tight, you guys. Like when I tell you that these are packed on tight, I literally like these do not budge. Like I'm putting pressure on them and like they won't come out. That's how packed I have this shelf. So I do have the Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. And then I have all of Angie Thomas's books on the come up, The Hate You Give and Concrete Rose. And then I've got Punching the Air by Evie Saboy and Yusef Salam. And so for this shelf right here, I've got all red books. So as you saw up top, I've got blue. And then here I've got red because I really wanted to display my edition of Muse of Nightmares, also by Lainey Taylor. Now this edition is a little bit trickier. They only did very few printings of this book. I believe they did a printing. This is the first edition UK hardback. So out of that, it only had one printing. And then I know several book boxes had their own editions, which have the same covers. What's different, I think it's like the end papers and stuff that's just a little bit different, but this is the edition that has the red sprayed edges. Hence why I didn't 
annotate this book and then we've also got some books here on the side here i've got the girls i've been felix ever after on the left side alongside the wrath and the dawn also by renee adier i thought this book had deckled edges and i was lied to and it doesn't which makes me a little bit sad because i was looking forward to this deckled edges which i know not everybody loves but i am in love with them got monday's not coming by tiffany d jackson as well as how it all blew up by arvina Madi and a cheeky slasher i also have clown in a cornfield by adam cesare or cesare and i of course have more books behind music nightmares because who would i be if i didn't i have got wicked fox which as you guys know i already told you i love this book i can't say enough good things about it i have also got the owl crate version of the ones we are meant to find i also have fat chance charlie vega which i'm very much looking forward to i have got the afterlife of holly chase by cynthia hand so this is also stacks galore on this side i have a bookshelf that a lot of you guys seem to love i am not particularly fond of this bookshelf because i feel like half of it makes sense like this side right here makes total sense and then that that part is like disaster but it's fine i i don't look at it too much i have my birthday candle right here sitting in the corner of this bookshelf because obviously i do burn this quite often don't judge me i have yet to cut the wig we are not wig cutters in this household though i am trying to get used to it and i obviously do have some trinkets right here i do have this little keychain that came in in a luma crate i have this little fake plant that i use a lot for pictures i also have the pin that came with which is steeped in gold a candle that came in a from blood and ash box and then as for the books in the shelf these are also packed on tight like if i move these these genuinely like do not move everything is like sealed tight in here with the fire on high by elizabeth acevedo clap when you land hello cruel heart by maureen johnson never look back by lilian rivera we have got the shadow of the wind also known as la sombra del viento i had ordered this book in spanish and then i got here in english so i guess that's what i get for ordering it online then i have allegedly grown a song below water and the gilded ones by Nami Forna. And moving on to this territory of the bookshelf, I have the book tin that came in the Owl Crate. This is a collection that Owl Crate is doing inspired on the Darker Shades of Magic series. And in here, I just house more bookmarks and tarot cards from Fairy Loot. So all of that I house in here and also the bookmarks that come in like book boxes. I just store those here as well as bookmarks that I get as like promo bookmarks for books that I receive in PR. We have got a few books that I have read and also a few books that I have haven't read. So we've got Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi and I generally have to take this book out because this book is freaking stunning and the hands, it's the hands you guys, it's it's the freaking hands. Every book has this and I just need to show that every single time that I talk about this book. Cast in Firelight, Every Heart of Doorway. We've got The Inheritance Games. We've got The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, Tweet Cute. Non Shall Sleep is a book that I am very interested in because this is meant to be also like a slasher sort of book. It is YA. We've got a on Crier's Moon, Our Last Echoes, Gideon the Ninth, The Ravens, The Box in the Woods, which is arguably my favorite in the Truly Devious series, and then The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. And then right here, I have got the Cassie Clare shelf, which ever since you guys last saw it, there were minor changes. I am also right here. Hello. <laughs> But this has gone through a little bit of a change. Since then, I have acquired my full set for the Dark Artifices series. So I do own them now all in the newer paperback. I do have the entirety of the Infernal Devices series in hardcover. This is Clockwork Angel, this is Clockwork Prince, and then Clockwork Princess. I do have Chain of Gold and then Chain of Iron, both in the Collector's First Edition. I was doing a reread of Chain of Gold before Chain of Iron came out and then I never finished it. And then Chain of Iron is obviously literally annotated to filth. I really enjoyed this book. And then we have the Shadowhunters Codex, which if you guys watched my last bookshelf tour, then you know that this is a part of the collection. Then I have another Novel Wicks candle right here. This is, shh, I'm reading. And it smells so good. It's like exactly the musky scent that I like. And then I've got this little plant that I got from Ikea. This and the other one that I showed you all came in a set of like three little plants like these. And I love them because it's a nice way to kind of dress up the bookshelf. And then for the Dark Artifices, we do have Lady Midnight, then we have Lord of Shadows, 
and Queen of Air and Darkness and they should technically line up like this so you get the full skyline but again for purposes of aesthetic and having the books in their right order I just keep them stacked out of the spine order. So I have the first set of the series which if you guys don't know this was meant to be a trilogy originally and then became a whole series. So it is City of Bones in the movie tie-in edition. I have City of Ashes and then I have City of Glass. As you can tell I did buy these around the time that the movie was coming out. And then I have City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and then City of Heavenly Fire. This is not a special edition. This is just the regular dust jacket, but I turned it inside out because it actually had this artwork under the dust jacket. This is probably one of my favorite shelves. This is my favorite kind of romance shelf in a way. I have the Brown Sisters trilogy right here. I have got all of the volumes for Heartstopper. And then over here, I have the Kiss Quotient and the Bright Test, which are the only two books out in the series. And then over here, I have the Bromance Book Club series. So this is what I keep in this shelf. And I hate taking this apart because it takes me so long to put it back up in like a perfectly Order. I keep this little mauve shaded apple at the top, right on top of Nick and Charlie. And right behind these books, I do have another one because I needed the extra space. And that is A Fall Love Story by Lone Limb. I absolutely adored this book too when I read it. I definitely recommend the audiobook for it. So that is a book that I just keep at the back because it doesn't really have anywhere else where I can put it, or at least it didn't up until I reorganized my bookshelves recently. So I definitely need to find it its rightful spot now just even down to the color scheme of it it's just so colorful and it just sparks joy whenever I see it so this is definitely one of my favorite little nooks in my bookshelf and so this is my book of the month shelf I only have one at the moment because I have taken some books out that I am keeping on the closet there are more books on my closet you guys I am not showing those books though because those are books that I have taken off the bookshelf because they just take too much space I do have a lot of other book of the month books there because I don't want it to take too much space so I've just kept the ones that I really need to read soon or the ones that I've already read and loved. So I do have it in a little rainbow, which I know some people would consider cheesy, but I just love the way that this looks. This was one thing that I was very much looking forward to with a book of the month shelf. I just wanted to organize everything by the little book of the month logo. And right at the corner, I do have my little golden dog, which if you guys have been here since the very start, it's been in every single shelf, in every single video. It's been moved around a thousand different times and it lives on the bookshelf. It shall never stop. So he he does live in this little corner right here, even though half his spot is at the outside because he's a little bit too big and these books are a little bit too tall. So first few books we have here are The Chestnut Man, Too Good To Be True, The Space Between Worlds, and then Instructions for Dancing by Nicole Yoon. Then we have Imposter Syndrome, Mexican Gothic by Celia Moreno Garcia, The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides, and Survive the Night by Riley Sager. This was an add-on that they had for the month of July and I just had to snatch it up. Then I have Ariadne, Project Hail Mary, The Lost of Apothecary and one of my all-time favorite books, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Next up is The Night Swim, The Maidens, Honey Girl, and then Anna K. Away, which is the sequel to Anna K. I also have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, How Lucky, and Arsenic and Adobo. And last but certainly not least, I have The Hunting Wives, which I really want to read soon. This thriller sounds super good. Bringing Down the Duke, The Dating Plan, and then Anna K., which is an Anna Karenina retelling by Jenny Lee. Okay, we are entering the last few bookshelves. Now, these are all of my taller hardcovers, and I obviously, after reading Ace of Spades, I just needed to have this one facing out. I absolutely freaking love this book. This is your public announcement service. If you have yet to read Ace of Spades, you absolutely need to. And let me just run through very quickly all of these books, which most of these are unread. So right in the corner, I have House of Leaves, which I am still terrified of reading, so I haven't done it yet, but I definitely want to read that sometime soon. Three chunkers and these are A Promised Land which is actually longer than I realized. This book is like over 700 pages but it doesn't look that long. It doesn't look that thick. Then we've got Becoming by Michelle Obama and we have Dan the Man, Mr. Dan Brown with Angels and Demons. We've got The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor and then two books which look very similar. They are not the same series but they are the same illustrator and these are The Unbroken by CL Clark and then The Jasmine Throne by Tasha 
Surrey. And as you can see, these are the Illumicrate Special Edition. So this one has red sprayed edges. And then with the Jasmine Throne, this one actually has stenciled edges. And it's just kind of, I guess, like a vine. Is that what you call it? Like a leaf vine. I also have my very incomplete Bone Season series by Samantha Shannon. So I do have the Bone Season, which is the first book. I also have the Mime Order, which is the second one. I don't own the third one, but I do own the Mask Falling. And all of these have gorgeous designs underneath the dust jacket. Like, I think all of them are the same. Obviously, you've already seen Ace of Spades, and right beside that, I do have In the Ravenous Dark, and this is the Illumicrate Edition, which also has stenciled edges. They're gorgeous. They're just these red flowers, which I love. And also, Where Dreams Descend by Janela Angeles. I will be reading this book in August, and I'm really excited. This is a part of my Patreon book club with Liv, so I'm really excited to tackle this book in August and just see what it's all about, because it's pitched as like a Phantom of the Opera meets Hadestown and I'm here for this vibe also. It's pitched as like the greatest showman. And then over on that corner, I first have a deal with the Elf King, which I believe I've shown you guys this book before, maybe even more than one time. This book, you guys, it's too stunning without its dust jacket. Then we've got The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Shakshi. And this book actually has deckled edges, which I love. We also got A Crown of Wishes, also by Roshani Shakshi. Lara and the Sun by Kasuo Ishiguro. And I am very excited about this book. This is the UK hardback edition. And here I have my small, beautiful manga shelf. I absolutely love this. I love looking at this every single day. And I can't wait to build it even more and to own more editions of things that I want to read. So in here, I have the newest edition, which is A Sign of Affection. I am very much looking forward to this. I actually almost read this today and then held myself back. I think I'll leave that for the readathon. I also have Paradise Kiss. We've got Naruto. We've got three volumes of Bleach, two volumes of Blood on the Tracks, one volume of Spy X Family, the first three volumes of Tokyo Ghoul. We've got Downfall by Ino Asano, and we also, oh, you guys. The black edition of Death Note. This is too gorgeous. It's got black sprayed edges. It's literally the moment. And then right beside that, I have Death Note, the Los Angeles BB murder cases, which takes place before Death Note. So this is a prequel novel. And this is also gorgeous. It is a little bit bent right here. It did suffer from a little accident when it got here, but it's still really pretty. So I still have it on. And on this side, I have my romance slash contemporary shelf slash things that don't fit anywhere else. So I just kind of dumped them here because they're all paperback. So I do have a few fantasies in here. So let me start by both of these up here, which I think you can barely see. They are It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover and Starfish. And then I've got these three books right here. So I've got Jade City by Fonda Lee. I have got In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, which I wanted to read last year around the holidays and then I never did. And we also got The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. Like I'm telling you guys, this is just a mess of a shelf because we've got spoiler alert. And then we've got more fantasy. We've got Gods of Jade and Shadow, also by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Then I've got a thriller, which is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. More fantasies. I've got Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes, as well as The Storm Crow by Kaylin Josephson. I love this cover. Like, I'm genuinely obsessed with it. Then I've got my stack of books right here. We've got A Touch of Darkness, Beach Read, Blitzed, The Bone Witch, These Witches Won't Burn, All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover, which if you have yet to read, I would absolutely recommend this. It is a beautiful book. It is very very heartbreaking. Definitely look up trigger warnings before you do, but it is my favorite Colleen Hoover book I've read. We've got The Roommate by Rosie Dannon, Meet Cute Club, Bear in the Nightingale, which I also, I was meant to read this book like two months ago and then I didn't. And then we've got Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. We had two books at the top there and those are Normal People, which I am currently reading as a Patreon buddy read. And then I also have Solid Sayer by Alice Oseman. Obviously more romance. We've got One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. I've got you Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle. And another Osman, we've got Radio Silence. Nearing the end of the shelf, I've got The Wicker King by Kate Ancrum. My favorite book of all time, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This book has been loved and annotated and just, I love this book. Read it if you haven't. And then I've got the first two books in the Intercepted series by Alexa Martin, Intercepted, and then obviously Fumbled. And last but not least on this shelf, I have a poetry collection, I Am the Rage. We've got The Martian by Andy Ware, which I definitely want to read. I just don't know if I'll read this before or after Project Hail Mary. I also have Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, which surprisingly 
interestingly enough, I've never read. I still have yet to read this. We've got Queenie, Labyrinth Lost by Soraya Cordova, and last but not least, Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. And then approaching Weird Angle Town with this super weird angle, but it's the only way that I know how to film this without holding it in my hand and it being super shaky. I have got kind of like my leftover shelf where, again, it's more of like a, a dump, I guess, where these don't really have a place, so I just put them all in here. So we've got a mix of like everything. Absolutely no rhyme or reason. I have just dumped these books here because they've been recently hauled. Or these are taller paperbacks that I generally don't know where to put, so they all just live here in kind of like the junk shelf, I guess I could call it. So to start the shelf off, I do have Priory of the Orange Tree, which I'm gonna be reading this month as part of my Patreon book club. It is epic fantasy and it'll be my first epic fantasy, which I'm excited about. We've also got another epic fantasy, Brandy Sandy. We've got Warbreaker. And then we've got Legendborn by Tracy Dion, which is an Arthurian retelling. I also have the Scythe Trilogy by Neil Shusterman, which if you've seen before in my channel, they don't match. I've got different editions for each book. It's in this glossy, shiny finish, whereas the second one is in a paperback and it's matte. And then the third one is in a hardcover. Then I've got my little stack of books right here. So right at the top, you can barely see this. I do have Cold Hearted by Serena Valentino, which I recently talked about in my TBR. And then beneath that, I have the Miracles of the Namiya General Store. I've got Sunshine, Kingdom of Exiles, the first two books in City of Brass, got the first two books in an Ember in the Ashes series, Ember in the Ashes, and then A Torch Against the Night, and The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Over on this corner, I just have this little decor. It's a pin hoop that came in a Luma Crate with some pins that I've gotten from like Luma Crate or other book boxes. And in here, I just house a bunch of other paperbacks. Most of these are like newly hauled, I think. So we've got my arc of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. It is the only arc that I have kept on my shelves. I have got Lovely War by Julie Berry from Luke of With Love by Mariana Zapata, which I really want to read soon. And then we've got my little Katie Robert collection, which I don't have learned my lesson here because I'm currently reading it, but we've got Neon Gods, Desperate Measures, A Worthy Opponent, and then The Beast. I do have a middle grade, which is the Jumbies. That didn't fit my middle grade shelf. I have got The Great Gatsby right here. This edition's really pretty. I really like it. And then I've got A Dowry of Blood, Wives of Dracula retelling. Then of course I've got Dracula and then Pride and Prejudice. So it's like my little classic or classic retelling smutty corner. For my last little small shelf, we've got all of my graphic novels slash novelizations of graphic novels. So you can see that right here at the top, I do have the two Ben's novelizations. So they are Striking Distance and then Disarmed. I just keep them both at the top because I want to read these soon. Then I have my little creepy book for Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I have got my little stack of graphic novels. So we've got The Magic Fish, The Girl from the Sea, Uzumaki by Junji Ito, which I really want to read soon. In fact, I want to buy a lot more Junji Ito and like build my own collection. I think it would be really cool to have like a smaller shelf dedicated to Junji Ito. We've got On a Sunbeam, Check Please Volumes 1 and 2, which if you have yet to read, I definitely recommend. And then Bloom, which is a single like standalone graphic novel. And then over here on the side, we've got the first three volumes of Monstrous. And then right beside it, I do have the four volumes for Fens, which I won't be taking all of the graphic novels out because these are a mess to put back in. I literally just organized these. But I have the four volumes of Fens, which again, if you haven't read, this is your public announcement service to do so. And then over on this side, I have more graphic novels. I have Brightly Woven by Alexandra Bracken. I've got March Book One. I've got Batman Hush, my first five volumes of Saga. And then I've got also The Killing Joke. And then I have got another junk shelf. So this is one that I didn't really bother to put together before making this video happen. These are just books that I really need to find a place for, but I have yet to do so. So we've got four book of the month books right here that I have either read and really enjoyed, which are these two, The Last Thing He Told Me and Head Over Heels. And then these two books that I really want to read. And that's why I'm keeping them here because I don't want to put them in my closet and forget about them. Then we've got Willa of Dark Hollow, which I love the cover for this, even down to Without the Dust Jacket. Like it's really pretty. We've got A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow, which you guys know I really enjoyed when I read it. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which honestly has one of the prettiest covers that I've seen. And then we've got Cemetery Boy, which you guys know I love, Wilder Girls, Bedazzled, and then The Lion's Den, which I clearly got from Thrift Books by the sticker. 
Okay, you guys, those are my bookshelves. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know I didn't take every single book out, but I didn't want to take apart the entire bookshelf because some books are so jam-packed that if I were to take them out, putting them back in in that same position is so painful to do. So I hope you guys didn't mind me not taking those books out for the sake of my bookshelves not being too destroyed and chaotic as I filmed this video. I thought it was the perfect opportunity to do this right now. Almost like a mid-year check-in to see how my bookshelves are looking like now. Maybe I'll do an updated version in like January again because I am sure by that point in time there will probably be more books, probably a new bookshelf. Maybe I'll be fully moved out by then because I do want to move out soon. So I'm sure there will be some major changes by the next time that I do this video. But if you did enjoy this installment, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below how you guys organize your bookshelves. As you guys saw, most of my shelves are organized by height and going hand in hand with that a lot of the books in the same genre are the same height so it just works out perfectly to also sort them out kind of in categories so that is personally the way that I do it it hasn't changed from last time which is why I didn't go too into detail on how I organize my bookshelves because nothing has really changed except the order of the shelves and how they look now but besides that everything else is pretty much the same and I love the way that they look so with that being said let me know down in the comments how you guys organize your bookshelves if there's any particular organization method that you guys use let me know also just let me know what you're currently reading i love to chat with you guys about what you guys are reading at the moment i personally am reading a learn my lesson by katie robert and i am going to finish that today and i'm so excited and then i am starting to kill a mockingbird for a little cheeky special video that i'm super excited for you guys to see very soon so let me know all of that in the comments and if you reach the very end of the video let's leave some stack of books emojis down below don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already for more bookish content i am constantly uploading videos that i'm I'm sure you don't want to miss and if you want more exclusive content from me i do have a patreon we call ourselves the citadel and we have a bunch of stuff happening over there we have a discord a book club buddy reads we've got a podcast weekly updates we've got exclusive videos i sprint there every sunday we also have movie nights there is a bunch of shenanigans happening over on the citadel so if you do want to join us the link for that is down below alongside all of my social medias and again thank you so much to anna luisa for sponsoring today's video don't forget that you can check them out over at the link on my description and get 20 percent off the entire site right now as part of their summer sale so you can get yourself some jewelry pieces and yeah i love you guys so much and i shall see you on the next one bye guys